Secrets in stone abound throughout the world. Easter Island, Isle of a Thousand Mysteries, minute, lost in the watery expanse of the South Pacific, 3,000 miles off the coast of Chile. The inhabitants call their island Marakitarani, which means eyes looking up to heaven. The neighboring atoll is called the island of the bird people, creatures with human bodies in the heads of birds. Von Donneken suggests that these bird heads could also be helmets equipped with a type of mask. The island's ancient legends tell of flying people who arrived amidst fire and thundering noise. The landscape is dominated by volcanic cratered lakes. Today, about 2,000 people live here. There were never more than 4,000 natives at any time. Of the total population, 70% were women, children, or the elderly. The majority of able-bodied men was needed for the production of food. Thus, the number of workmen was so small that it would have been impossible for them to create the more than 600 gigantic stone figures found everywhere on the island. Many of the stone gods stand 65 feet high and weigh nearly 400 tons. Most of the sculptures are but partly exposed. Only excavation reveals their true size. The figures are all the same, an unusual type of human wearing the same haughty, taciturn expression. One statue, unearthed by explorer Thor Heyerdahl, suggests man's role. Unlike the others, it has a rounded head and is kneeling. The workshop at the volcanic crater, Ranoraraku, has stone so hard that repeated hammering with a stone chisel hardly scratches it. The colossi carved here were removed to distances as much as 12 miles from this location. There was no army of slaves for labor, no wood for rollers, nor the slightest traces to suggest that the sculptures were dragged across the island. And so they lie here, mute, eyes looking up to heaven. Easter Island might have been the key to many mysteries. When it was first discovered, a group of wooden tablets covered with hieroglyphics were found. But zealous missionaries burned them, sealing the secrets of the monoliths. So we must look elsewhere for explanations. The legends of Easter Island claim that the stone giants move themselves with the help of mana, a mysterious force which only two priests could invoke. And that one day the priest disappeared, and so did the mana. What was mana? Von Daniken wondered if there were strangers from other planets possessed of extraordinary powers. Did they have the ability to defy the laws of gravity? To this day, Easter Island exerts an unusually strong magnetism. The report of a French expedition in 1964 ends as follows. Since there are inexplicable magnetic forces and unusual geological phenomena on Easter Island, one cannot exclude the possibility of extraterrestrial contacts. line from Easter Island is the Bay of Pisco along the coast of southern Peru.
from the ground, there is what appear to be a meaningless set of lines. But from a high altitude, they form a trident 300 feet long, pointing the way inland. Pointing the way to what? Across the scorched and rocky terrain are spread the remains of deserted ancient cities. An entire civilization, now vanished, once flourished around the mysterious plain of Nazca. Lines running toward us, away. Lines which mean nothing from the ground. Long furrows cut into the iron-rich parched soil, cut there at least 2,000 years ago. great height, from an aircraft for instance, the lines fall into focus. We see a spider, an eagle, a peacock, and a hummingbird, none of which can be recognized from the ground. And there is no observation point, no mountain nearby, overlooking the plain. The giant drawings must have been directed by someone hovering high above. Straight as arrows, one huge geometric puzzle. Some lines parallel, some intersecting. Starting nowhere and ending nowhere. The conclusion reached by von Däniken is that the lines represent a landing field. The plain of Nazca is a gigantic abandoned airport. Landing strips, roads, and flattened beds that resemble rocket launch ramps were cut into the plateau. In a radius of 1,000 miles, enduring archaeological mysteries abound. And the question arises, was this the center, the base camp of an ancient astronaut colony? Around the world, we have seen carvings in Japan, Egypt, Australia, Yugoslavia. And all bear a striking resemblance to the carvings at Nazca. Was Earth visited by creatures, astronauts from another planet? We have only fragments, but look up into the sky some clear starlit night and allow yourself the freedom to wonder. Radio telescopes are scanning the stars for signals. Some are even sending signals, not to anyone in particular, but to anyone who may be able to hear them. By some incredible coincidence, perhaps we will establish a dialogue with an extraterrestrial community, even if that conversation is only a matter of meaningless blips and dots. NASA recently launched an aluminum greeting card into space, addressed in effect to whom it may concern. Etched on the plaque are the nude figures of a man and a woman. 
two-digit computer code numbers, and a diagram showing Earth's location within the nine planets of our solar system. A message to whatever intelligent life there may be in the universe. Hello from Earth to some wandering ancient astronaut. NASA is especially interested in the possibility of life on the planet Mars. The Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California has had a direct line to Mars via the Mariner 9 spacecraft, which has been taking extensive photographs as it orbits the red planet. Mars is a world significantly like the Earth in terms of atmosphere, temperature, and gravity. It is also the closest and easiest to explore in depth. To date, no recognizable life has been detected. But the same was true of previous Mars missions. The last time photographs were taken, scientists agreed that there was definitely no life on Mars. However, the smallest area the spacecraft's camera could focus on was three miles wide. Therefore, the only things we might have missed are a couple of mile-long elephants. Dr. Carl Sagan is one of the directors of the Mariner mission exploring Mars. And he has a special interest in the possibilities of intelligent life in the universe. The question arises, might there have been a visit to the Earth in historical times? There are popular books on this subject. Um, it's an idea which people find exciting. It's a kind of mm, scientific justification of theological belief, which people would rather believe uh, uh, in any case. Uh, it's kind of modern dress for old-time religion. Well, what about that? Is, it, is that possible or not? I can only say that you can't exclude the possibility, but there's not a smidgen of evidence that is compelling. Yeah.